So now our next question is for all of you, but we're going to try to go this way around just to twist things up. Um, this is from spot.ph. Miss Saigon has had multiple productions in the West End, Broadway, and also international tours. It was last staged in the Philippines in 2000. What should we look forward to for this 2024 run? Kiara? Oh, I think we touched on some of them already. Um, of course, Sean. Yes, definitely. That's something new to look forward to. Um, I think, well, having different actors in general will always bring a different take. Um, Abby's Kim, as she said, she's fully made it her own. Um, I think the amazing thing with this production as well is that um, a resident director, Teresa Nguyen, is a Vietnamese American uh, woman. And I think that perspective is so valuable to this production. Um, and it, the changes might seem subtle, but I think if you're a fan, you'll really notice them. Um, there, were, there was a lot of effort put into um, like whether it be Vietnamese ad-libs or, or more uh, Vietnamese culture put into this production. I think it was very, very beautiful to see. And I know in Sydney, they, they reworked a lot of the Dreamland scenes to make sure that um, the females and the women in the, in the um, bar were, were given more power and were, were more highlighted, were the focus of those scenes. And I think those changes are really, really beautiful to see in 2024 because it's such a beloved musical that is also able to adapt. So I think um, that's the beauty of this current production. Um, I'd have to second that. Um, it has been 24 years since it was last in Manila, and a lot of my friends um, and a lot of people who you know in the theatre community were in that production. Um, and this particular version that we're put on, um, and Kiara had said before, we were allowed to really inject ourselves into those roles, um, as uh, Sean said before, um, and really just bring ourselves. We really did our research together um, and away by ourselves into what went on um, and what you see on stage is just a reflection of the hard work that everybody in this young, um, vibrant um, and excellent club, excellent cast um, are bringing to the stage. Um, honestly, I can't say anything more, you just have to go see it. So I hope there are tickets left, because <laughs> otherwise you're missing out. <laughs> That's a big one, guys, so act fast. Sean? What was the question again? <laughs> <laughs> What's new and fresh? What's right? something that you can yes. we can all look forward to? Well, they all mentioned, you know, the women are highlighted, yeah. but the main thing is we're bringing ourselves, yeah. you know. And Cameron even said that to Abby, like, just play you, um, which is fabulous. But I, I think the main thing as well is our world has changed. Absolutely. You know, the times we are living, we are still living in a world of war. Um, you know, LGBT, LGBTQ plus IA is proud and up there in the, in the air, and also, oh, what was I gonna say? You doing that just sounds great on its own. <laughs> the <laughs> reverb. Yes, I'm there. Look, as I say, the times we are in is, and that's it, the perspective, right? 10 years ago, you know, Chris and the American GIs were the heroes. But now I believe in this time, the amazing Asian slave, our Asian people are, we are, the, we are seen as the heroes and the survivors through the turmoil and struggle that is war. But even though, again, I don't want to put down the, um, you know, the American GIs, but it, the times have changed, so perspective and people coming out of it go, it shifts. But you have to come see it, that's the point, right? <laughs> Yes. I think that's what's really great is that times have changed, but in spite and despite, it's so relevant. It's relevant. The exactly. perspective in whatever way you look at it, it still has so much life. Yes. Everything you're seeing on the stage, turn on ABS-CBN and in our world, and it's exactly what is happening. So it almost is like, this is exactly what's going on. What are you going to do about that? Exactly. And as performers, we go ourselves, and as long as we change the perspective and minds of our audience members, we're doing our job. That's right. Abigail? Yeah, I love that you touched on perspective. I think when we were rehearsing Miss Saigon, um, our director, Theresa Nguyen, and 
JP, we like to call him JP, um, we really focused on researching the show and making sure that we find the complexity of those perspectives. Because each character, Chris's character, Kim's character, engineer, everybody, has their own internal world that is so unique. And the choices that they make is driven by so many internal motivations that I think um, as actors, we have so many tiny subtle changes that we make, but it makes a huge difference. I mean, in Last Night of the World, we made some lyric changes to, to bring more agency to Kim. Um, you know, back before, Chris was the savior to, to take Kim out, um, and she was painted more of a victim rather than being in charge of her own destiny. But I was consistently told that I am in charge of my destiny. I am choosing to be with you because I love you, not because I'm just using you to, 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 to get out of this situation. And I think because we touch on those complex perspectives, the, the feeling of love and tragedy is much, much more palpable. And I can't wait for you guys to see those internal characters come to life when you come and see it. And just to add on that, um, how she is in charge, you can see on the branding, they flipped it, because it's usually Chris holding Kim, I've got you. But if you see on the new branding, it's the other way around, which is well, the first time that she is holding Chris being like, I got you. <laughs> which, just those little details, yeah. but as young women, yeah. looking up at that imagery, she's in charge. Like that, I got chills, but you know what I mean? Like exactly. those subtle changes make the show our show, and yes. the best Miss Saigon, I'm gonna say it. Yeah, there you go. It's a new generation that pays homage and honors everyone's legacy. And it's really, really special to see how it's growing. Yes, and it is the pioneers who have played this role before us. You know, Coco and Laurel, I had a yeah. gorgeous interview with them, who played the role in Sydney and um, just to hear his perspective, but it's the pioneers before us have allowed us to be in this point right now. So without them, we wouldn't be up here on the stage. Amen. And soon you are going to be a part. You not, not soon, you are already a part of that legacy and we're cheering oh. for all of you. <laughs> Nigel? I think along those lines, I would just say that we all have a tendency for a comparison but I would challenge people when they come to see the show to sort of put that away. And you know, I feel I feel for Abby who gets messages all the time being compared to Leia and all that sort of stuff. But as much as we love Leia and Jonathan Price, this is not Leia Salonga's and Jonathan Price's Miss Saigon. This is Abigail Adriano's and Sean Miley Moore's Miss Saigon. So I would challenge people to to sit and and watch the show for what it is today and what, what they've brought to it, because it is, it's a completely different show. Lyrics, com songs even, are uh, yes. wildly different. Ellen like, sings Ellen has a new right? song, yeah, gorgeous, you know, yeah. things like that. So I, I, I guess, yeah, I would just say that with what these guys bring, put, put away your, your, your feeling of comparison and just sit and, and bask in the power that these guys bring to this that show. That you bring as well. Yeah, but, you know, meow. But yeah, and that, that's what I would say. Thank you. Thank you. And now our next question is for Kiara. This is from inquire.net. Kiara, what are the similarities and differences of being a P-pop and, the, and in theater? And how did you find the balance in being a P-pop idol and a theater actress? So for those of you who don't know, P-pop is? Philippine pop. There yes. you go. So yes. we, you know, we love J-pop, we love K-pop. I like P-pop. P-pop. It's a time for P-pop right now. Yes. Hi, yes. yes. I'm P-pop and OPM. So, yours? Um, actually, I really find that theater helps me in every aspect of performing. Um, and what's nice about my girl group Daydream is that we all come from different performing backgrounds. So I'm uh, I'm in theater. Pow. My other group mate, she's also in theater, um, and she's also a live streamer. And then our other group mate, Denise, is a host, and uh, she was a cheerleader as well. So what I love about um, P-pop and theater, it's like it feels almost very similar in the sense that it's a culmination of so many different types of 
performing arts and you also have you know your music videos and your sets and your costumes and your makeup so I think it's really not um, a separate thing and I think what I love about the Philippines is that we excel in those types of arts we like to be extra the right? yeah. um, so that is so it's such a valuable trait to have when it comes to um, arts like theater and and in pop so I would really just like to ask everybody to please support Philippine and local art because the only reason I'm standing here today is because of the training and the amazing um, exposure of Philippine art that I, I get to live with every day. So there are so many musicals and plays running right now. I feel like it's the golden age of Philippine theater. It's the first time we're seeing so many shows running at the same time. Um, and we also have so many amazing Philippine pop artists like SB19 and Beanie. And I would just like everybody, if you love Miss Saigon and if you love art, please support your Filipino artists because um, we know that the talent is there. All that is missing is the support from the people and the government and the institutions. So please give Filipino artists the, the support and the respect that we deserve. Absolutely. Thank you, Kiara.